In this video, I'm gonna show you how to purchase a domain name and set it up using DigitalOcean. So how to point your DigitalOcean IP to a domain name that you purchased somewhere else. So this is gonna be kind of a complete beginner's guide if you've never done this before. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. I'm going to be, I guess the first step is you need a server set up. So if you didn't watch the video prior to this one where I hosted our Django application on the internet, so you should have a IP address that you can visit your website from, uh, you'll need that to move forward with this video. So we're gonna be purchasing a domain from namecheap.com. There'll be a link in the description of this video for uh, if you wanna help me out and give me, I think it's like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much I get. I don't make very much money, but it gives me like a little piece of whatever you purchase, and it helps helps out the channel, helps out me make uh, better content, obviously. So if you want to help me out, click that link, and it'll just take you to Namecheap. It does. It doesn't affect your price in any way. It might actually make it cheaper, if anything. So first step is just going to the website and trying to figure out what domain you want to purchase. If um, you know if you know what you want already, you can just type it in and see if it's available. But pro probably chances are, if it's something common, it's already going to be taken. For this course, I bought the uh, the domain name uh, open API open API.xyz. So that's the one that I purchased. But if you obviously you won't be able to purchase that since I did. But uh, it was just it was really cheap. The XYZ domains I find are very cheap. It doesn't really matter. Uh, some of the .io domains are also kind of cheap. Um, I think I only paid like a dollar for mine. It was like just barely over a dollar. So kind of explore that and see what you can find. Um, I would just go for whatever's cheapest at this point because it's just for teaching purposes. But uh, yeah, if you, I mean, you can spend as much as you want to spend. Once you have a domain picked out, you'll need to create an account and actually buy that domain. So add it to the cart and buy it. So I'm gonna kind of skip ahead here because I've obviously already bought this one and I just wanna show you the next steps. So once you've made an account and you've purchased a domain, you should be seeing something like this. So you'll have the domain that you purchased here and it will just, it'll look exactly like I see right here. We'll have an expiration date, uh, you'll have the domain name, Nothing really special here. So the next step is we need to point the IP address to this domain name from DigitalOcean. So if we go to DigitalOcean, uh, first we can go to create, go to domain slash DNS. And here I wanna type in that new, that new domain. So mine is openapi.xyz. It's gonna be part of the Coding with Mitch blog course. I'm gonna click add domain says it was added to the project and now I want to add some records. So the first one is I just want to do an at symbol and I want to enter the IP address. So that's going to be uh, this this project right here and I want to create create that record. What that does is it just points open-api.xyz uh, to that IP address. The other one that I want is www. So the same thing, I select the IP address and go create record. So now both www.openapi.xyz will point to the IP, same with openapi.xyz. So that's all set up on DigitalOcean's end now, but we need to still point the name servers for this domain to DigitalOcean to enable it. So what I'm gonna do is go into manage right here for that particular domain. Namecheap is kind of slow, just so you know, it sometimes takes a long time to load something. So don't think it's weird if, if you're sitting here waiting for a few minutes, or not a few minutes, probably 30 seconds even. After you click on manage, you should be taken to this screen. You'll, you should have an active and a check mark on status and validity. If it's not valid or it shows some kind of an error, you're gonna wanna read that and do whatever it tells you. Um, chances are you'll have to, I think, click some kind of email verification, I believe, to get this active check mark. So just keep that in mind that this needs to show that it's active. Next, you wanna scroll down to where it says name servers. You wanna type in these three name servers, ns1digitalocean.com, ns2digitalocean.com, and ns3digitalocean.com. That lets the domain registrar, or the registry, the, the place that owns the domain where it exists, it lets it know that DigitalOcean is gonna be in charge of routing the IP address or whatever else, you, whatever you wanna do with it, basically. It's like giving DigitalOcean permission to do stuff with it. So you wanna have those three in there, and uh, there's a save button at the bottom, I think. Maybe there's not, maybe it'll just automatically save, or a save button will appear over there. Wherever the save button appears, click it. 
the last step is we need to add this new domain to our allowed hosts list for our Django project. Sorry, there's actually two steps left. We need to add it to the allowed host for the Django project, and we need to alter a G unicorn settings file on the server. So we're gonna do both of those things now. So here I am on the server. You wanna navigate to wherever your Django project is. In my case, that's in my site. I wanna open the settings.py file. So I'm right clicking on that. I'm going to open with the text editor for um, whatever text editor you want. You just gotta open it. And we wanna add a uh, that open API domain here. So www.openapi.xyz. And I also want to add the uh, the regular one without www. So openapi.xyz. I want to press control S to save that. Now you might have to be sometimes actually usually I'll say usually when you make a change to any of your files in your Django project, you'll need to restart G unicorn. And you can do that by writing service G unicorn restart. Or you can, depending on what, in, in this case, I'm using G-Unicorn Nginx, so I would have to restart G-Unicorn. So depending on whatever you're using, you basically just want to restart your server. So typing whatever command you need to to restart your server, that's what you need to do. In my case, I just need to restart G-Unicorn. The last step is editing a file for an Nginx set, an Engin, Nginx configuration file. And we can get that by going into etc. So I'm, I'm logged in with the root user. I'm going into etc, finding the nginx directory, going into sites available. We just did this not long ago, if you've been following along with this short uh, course on launching a website with DigitalOcean. And uh, we, need to, we need to edit this Django project file. If you don't have this file, you need to go back and watch the video that I made before this one, because I show you how to set up all this stuff. So I'm uh, getting opening up this configuration file, and here is where I need to add my my new domain name so www.openapi.xyz and i'm just doing a space here there's no comma there's no anything else and i want to do openapi.xyz uh, without the www and now i want to press Control s to save that and uh, the last step is i want to restart nginx so i'm coming into my server here and i want to do sudo systemctl restart nginx and I want to actually check to make sure that the server, the G Unicorn service is running correctly before I take a look. So systemctl status G Unicorn dot service. And if that is working correctly, which it is, uh, we know that everything should be good to go, or at least everything is ready. The domain might not have been pointed there yet, but we know that everything is set up and ready to go. So I'll, I'm going to check this to see if it's working openapi.xyz looks like it's not set up yet so openapi.xyz with www again not working so that means that we still need to wait a little bit because the name servers haven't uh, finished doing what they're supposed to in the background yet so i'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back and take a look all right so it's been at least five minutes um Keep in mind that uh, trying it in a, in a regular browser window might give you a problem because it might try HTTPS. So you might want to open an incognito window and try that. And uh, there, you can, there you can see that now it's working. So I have openapi.xyz and also I'll try www.openapi.xyz. Uh, looks like that one's not working because it is trying HTTPS. But um, if you get that, there, that one's working. So www.openapi.xyz. So if you are seeing this in an incognito window, it means that everything is working correctly and uh, we are ready to move on to the next kind of step. If for some reason it's still not working for you, what I the things I would recommend doing is restarting the server for one. So in, in the case of a Unix system, you can do sudo shutdown negative R now. That will basically restart your entire server. It'll take about 20 seconds to restart. So try that. Also to um, go into sites available and open this default file and copy it. So like copy everything and then paste it into like a notepad file on your computer, like on your local machine. So just like, you know, paste it in just so you have it and then delete that file and recreate it. I don't know why, but I, tr I know I've tried that in the past and I recreated it and I pasted in the, the code from the notepad file and then it started working so i don't know i mean i'm just trying to tell you things that you can try um but if that if that doesn't work i don't know you're gonna have to go back and, and re-watch the video and see if you missed a step 
So that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to set up HTTPS on the server.